Hey guys, good evening. Happy Tuesday to ya. It is time. Let me scoot my chair. It is time for. Hold on, I'm fixing my chairs. Okay, I have my setup ready. This is my ultimate crafting setup in my kitchen. It is time for yet another wonderful art throwdown evening. For anybody joining, uh, yes, watermelon. The watermelon t-shirt made its resurgence tonight. It is re-emerging from the closet. And uh, even my kids commented on it. My, my daughter was like, yay, I love when you wear your watermelon shirt. And I was like, yay. Um, so I see a bunch of fine folks popping in here this fine Tuesday evening. And um, I just want to let you guys know, uh, Russ will actually not be joining us this evening. Uh, because um, the man is working like ungodly amounts of hours. And so um, Frank carried a watermelon. And so, um, yeah, I think he is still on his way home. So he's still in transit. And um, so this is going to be, you guys remember that other night where like it was just Russ? Uh, <laughs> so tonight it's going to be just me unless someone else wants to pop on and, uh, you know, and Frank, I will name that movie. It was Dirty Dancing. Oh, that's like, that's like, that's, that's a, a no brainer. No brainer. So I want to quickly roll call all y'all and see who's here. All right. I see Carrie and Carrie, what the heck? I still cannot believe we got to do something about Kansas. Like, can we do something about the state of Kansas? I cannot believe that um, you have not received the bingo postcard as of yet. So I, um, I don't know what to say about that, but like, that's terrible. Did you know that Fee in Scotland actually got the bingo postcard before you did in Kansas? What the heck? So I don't know what's up with the mail routes out that way in the Midwest, but, um, color me baffled. Like that is just odd. I do not understand how something like that could happen. Um, also, let's see, Nan is on. Nan, I have an envelope of goodies that are going out to you, to you, in tomorrow's mail. So that'll be going out. Let's see, I see Phil and Ashley, and I see Penelope, um, and I see Jim. Uh, Jim wanted to offer you, on behalf of our whole crew here, offering our condolences to you, Mr. Jim. Um, and I see Heidi and I see Frank and all of his movie references and I see Jennifer and let's see. Yeah, Frank, I agree with you. I think the Midwest mail routes must be like they're broken. Um, oh, it's all by truck. So why? I hate to be, I hate to get all Socratic, but like, why, why? Why can't they just fly a big old plane of mail into like Topeka and then distribute it from there? That is nuts. Uh, but R Frank is noting here that um, the mail in the Midwest is taking seven to 10 days. And I assume that's like business days from the East Coast. There are no air. Are there, so are there no airplanes? Um Flying from the east into the Midwest, most mail goes commercial. Ah, but still, like I don't, I don't get that. I'm, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um. So let's see, what other interesting announcements do we have? Uh. So next Wednesday, the fifteenth, is gonna be the bingo. Frank says there's no airplanes. There are no airplanes flying anywhere right now. Boo! Well, and Rockabilly Nick joined. Hey guys, you'll notice, yes, like COVID lockdown. You know, I have not been on an airplane. And before COVID and the before four days, I think I traveled probably at least twice a month by plane somewhere. But uh, I haven't been in one of those um, metal boxes with wings since February. So it has been a while. Um, Nick, we were just talking about why the mail takes so long to get <laughs> from the East Coast to the Midwest. And Frank is saying it um, they're doing only truck routes or uh, no, no planes are flying in. So 
that is explaining why I think Carrie, you're the only one of us who has not yet received your bingo postcard. So hopefully, um, those seven to 10 days will, um, produce that postcard for you because we're hoping to do the bingo, uh, by Wednesday, the 15th worst case. Um, I will just snap a photo of one of my extra cards, Carrie, and you can just kind of play digitally or you can kind of print it out or something. We'll figure it out, but it does seem a bit, um, unusual that you don't have it. And yet Fee got hers in Scotland in like two or three days. That was wild. I thought it was going to take weeks for Fee to receive hers. So, um, for those of you who are just joining, Russell is not here tonight. I know. Boo. Um, so he is, he's been working like a madman. That guy gets up at five to get to work at 6 a.m. So he's working some hella hours right now. And, um, you know, I get it. I totally get it. So, um, my big question out to you guys, what is everybody working on tonight? I, I guess I'm going to keep it simple tonight. I'm going to be doing some coloring and I've got my watercolor pencils here that I got from Hobby Lobby for a mere $9.99. So check them out, check them out. And, um, I also have in Russ's honor. So Russ, I know, cause I know he can't stay away. He will not keep away. He needs to know what happened. Um, he'll be total looky loo on this one. So I know he's looking at us right now in the future. So Russ, I'm going to use your Crayola nature escapes coloring book. And in the past, I know he mentioned when they first put this thing together, look at all the cool pictures here, um, that he originally did not like these ones with the super black background and like the white, like way contrasty. I actually like these for envelopes. I think these make a very solid envelope. Oh my God. Penelope is addressing 24 postcards for a swap. My wrist hurts like just reading that. <laughs> Oh my God. I got to ask too, is it a swap bot swap? What kind of swap is it? Uh, oh, look, seahorses. And yeah, so many, oh my God, so many choices. I think for tonight, just to keep it simple. Oh my gosh. Take the plunge. Look at that. Got a big old sea turtle here. I'm going to do one of these because this, the last time I did one of these, it was one with a black background and this giant, super detailed bird. And it made the coolest envelope ever. So I am going to pull one of these out, man, that Russell, look how crafty he is. I can't believe he designed all these little dudes, a giraffe. What else have we got here? Elephants, hmm. big elephant. Mm, looks like some kind of a, lioness i don't know cougar i don't know i don't know my animals oh i like this one go wild i think that one is perfect for this evening that'll match my watermelon shirt of wildness let's see what else we got in here parrots toucans flamingos Ooh, flamingos you know these would actually make for a cool envelope hey pam all right jennifer is requesting to be live come on in and uh, Ashley said she colored that bird on a black background and she's going to make an envelope too. Yay. Also, Frank has, Frank is riding the snake. I want everybody here to know it. Hey, Jennifer. Hi. Frank, I have to announce this. Frank decided to ride the snake. And by ride the snake, I mean, he got himself a punch board and the dude is making envelopes. Like he's making envelopes like there's no tomorrow, which... I never thought he would be one to be an envelope maker, but then again, I think in each and every one of us, there is an envelope maker buried deep down somewhere. You just have to tap into it. It's all about the timing and the opportunity. So speaking of timing and opportunities, Jennifer has valiantly jumped in because Russ is not here. So um, are you working on something? You must be working on something. Hi. I am. I know. I was like, where's Russ? Well, <laughs> He's working late and he didn't get home yet. So um, he sends his regards and um, Jim says hi and bye to Pam. Hey, wait a minute. Where'd she go? <laughs> Pam, Pam already said bye. She had oh, to go. Sorry. Bye, Pam. Her son is visiting. Okay. I get it. Totally get it. All right. Oh, wait. She's still here. Um, hey, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, well, you, I definitely want, you know, to see what you're coloring tonight, but I actually did just take a class that was the one I kind of put in our group thing, like, as it was starting. Cool. So, um, it was sort of about this idea of um, making zines that, um, it was, so it was like different techniques of things you can do. And um, I feel like the structural part is like, that part I know, um, but as far as how to bring context into things is a bit harder for me. So um, I was actually like literally taking notes as to like you know how to describe a zine mm -hmm. so i took down uh includes matter something that like matters to you and it could be inside or for the cover as well okay so i was looking around my house so i didn't just make another book with really you know pattern paper but to do something a little more unique and so i went to the color factory back in january it's like one of those places where it's all these experiences and you take really cool photos and every room had to do with color nice. so my, is this like a museum my, thing what is this it, sort of it's like um you just go into different rooms and it's like there's different colors or visual things you can um, touch or play with or take really like photos to put on Instagram for. <laughs> and it, like beautiful <laughs> photo opportunities, it sounds like. Where yeah. in Manhattan is this wondrous place? Um, so a lot of these experience photo places popped up lately. Mm -hmm. And this one is down sort of, um, where is it actually? I think it was by Houston Street sort of, okay. um, which... So it's like the West Village area. Mm -hmm. And nice. um, so one of the things we did was um, we were like look, look staring across from each other in these like little color booths and there was different prompts and we were supposed to like draw each other like a portrait of each other. Wait, lighting's bad. You can't see no, it. No, okay, no, well, I see the circle. Yep. Um, so in the circle, there's like a line drawing. So we each did one of each other kind of through the booth and um so it was anyway so it was a flat piece of paper mm -hmm. and um and i was like oh i'll just like i'll use that as my cover because otherwise i would have like pr probably thrown this out because what do you do with it right yeah Even you're like oh I want it, but now what so anyway so i threw that into a book uh, organic book as it were because um i thought that it would create uh, I, I, there was a white line here, which is where I put the stitching mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, perfect. That's a perfect, like halfway point. But as it turned out, it actually wasn't halfway because, um, ah. one, one side is longer mm -hmm. and I had my paper to that size. And so then when I went to throw it together, I was like, you know what? That doesn't bother me. So I just kind of went with it. Um, and for those of so, you wondering, okay. it is www, obviously, www, dot, right. colorfactory dot co. There's no dot com. It's just a dot co, Frank. All right. Frank is our resident research librarian. I love it. Frank, you're like Perfect. our Library of Congress librarian for Art Throwdown. So like if Art Throwdown had its own Library of Congress, you would be like the master librarian. Just saying. So cool. Glad we have them. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. so oh, it I is dot co. Okay, colorfactory dot co for anybody interested or wondering where this fabulous place is. Um, and now with all the social media, like, how can you not want to go and take photo ops there? Like, that's just so cool. It was so crazy because there was also like a ball pit, which now, like, I don't know how you could imagine going in like after a whole like you know health crisis, but yeah. it was. You're bringing back and some 1980s Chuck E. Cheese ball pit memories for me. Like when we used to crawl in the ball pit, it was wet in there. And like you just didn't know what like, what that was from. Um, I assume like some little kid peed in there or like somebody spilled their soda. I don't know. But like whenever you crawled through that thing, you just didn't question what the wetness was. You just kind of crawled around it or beyond it. But anyway, oh, ball pits. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, but wait, the best part, there was treats actually throughout it. So it was all these color for treats. So we had like blue ice cream, which was like reflective of the, the ball pit. The color was blue in there. And um, so the ice cream was really good. Or we had like uh, macaroons. 
They so, would feed um, you while you looked at art? Yes. Okay, yeah. this is bringing me back. I got to throw a quick memory out here, guys. I used to live in D.C., and at the time, I did not know a heck of a lot of people, and um, I was super shy, like super socially anxious. So um, way back when, this is going back well over 10 years ago, I joined this um, like social networking organization. It wasn't like a dating one. It was more just like meet friends in the city. I'm like, yay, I'm in a city and I need friends. So let's do this. <laughs> so one of the first events, the very first events I ever went to with this group, um, and, and I don't know, I think they still exist. It's called meetin, M-E-E-T-I-N.org. Um, but this is going back like well over 10 years ago and this before Facebook and its heyday and all that. This was before that. Uh, but it would they would organize groups and events. I went on this thing called the Art Walk in D.C. And it's the first Friday of every month. And you'd go to all these galleries and you could buy the art and they would feed you. And like they had the, the <laughs> drinks would flow like this thing. I mean, it wasn't as swanky as going on like some of those embassy crawls where you can go embassy to embassy and they feed you all these like exotic cuisines. But it was still pretty darn cool because you could just walk into a gallery and like look at all of this like Hieronymus Bosch artwork and it'd be like, oh, cool. And I just butchered his name. I know. But then there'd be like a table of wine and I'd be like, OK, I'm going to go over here now. And there'd be somebody pouring. And they're like, would you like some cheese? I'm like, yes, yes, I would. So we would my, my friends and I, um, my, my newfound friends in D.C. and I would just tank up at these galleries and then we'd go to happy hour afterwards and it was just fabulous. So you just brought back like a flood of memories, Jennifer. But like food yeah. plus art, like food and art bring people together. Like it's just, it's such a powerful combo. I love that. So now yeah. I'm really going to the color, color factory. Factory, yes. So, okay. Then the next thing I wanted to share is this. So Whoa. I did this class last week. It's um, circle weaving. Is that woven paper? Yes. Yeah, it's what? woven. How? Yeah. How did you how do you do that? <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. So I thought I would grab materials and work on that, which I have to still grab for. So we could go into our work mode. We could see what you're coloring. Totally. And, and yeah. All right. And uh, Lisa just joined. Hi, Lisa. Um, Russell, as you see, is not with us tonight. So Jennifer very courageously decided to jump in, which is awesome. And she's going to be doing some awesome paper weaving tonight, circle weaving, as it were. And um, I was just talking about Russell's coloring book here. So I, I am, I don't know, I'm just vibing on these little flamingo guys. I'm going to use these tonight for my project. And uh, I'm going to point the camera down here in just a second once Jennifer gets back. And uh, I've got these. Russell's not here, so he can't yell at me for going to Hobby Lobby. But look, I got these at Hobby Lobby. And uh, these were $9.99. came with 24 different uh, pencils. And so, yeah, got lots of different colors here. I, I think, honestly, there's a nice pink in here. This might be nice for the flamingos. Um, but look at my, I've got the watermelon shirt. I'm just, i got a lot of pink going on tonight. Not intentional. It's just kind of happened that way. And I'm going to pick some pencils. Ooh, this would make a good flamingo as well. Yeah. So we'll do some clouds. We'll do some flamingos. We'll do some, um, I don't know, green menagerie or some kind of, some kind of art deco looking um, styling behind it. We'll do that. Um, so yeah, this is eventually going to get all colored in. I don't know if I'll finish it all tonight, but then I, since these are watercolor pencils, once these are all paint, uh, colored in, I'm going to take uh, water and very gently brush over these and make them watercolor flamingos, let that dry. And more than likely this will become a lined envelope. So that is my game plan for this tonight. Those flamingos look good. I am excited. And I'm going to try to adjust my lighting so I don't look like I'm telling a ghost story. Good luck with that. Well, I'm because... testing out my new lighting. I have one of those circle lights and it's behind, it's behind the screen. Did you just and... buy it? Yeah, I got it. Like I was um... like, why is your lighting better than mine? <laughs> Like that lighting looks very polished and professional. I did not realize you had you had rode the snake and gotten the ring light, but that's awesome. I did. It's actually a ring light with like a clip for your cell phone, but um, but I'm just using like my tablet below it. 
But that's super useful if you're going to do videos or presentations or tutorials, demos, whatever. Um, super useful. So, yeah, Phil, I agree. That's very pro. She's go She's gone pro, everybody. She's gone pro. I'm trying. <laughs> she's gone pro. So, all right. So to make this, you need two different colors of paper. Or you can do... Um, well, that was weird. I got very orange when I blocked out. Um, <laughs> or you could use, like, let's say a solid and a pattern. Okay. Um, so I'm using this paper. It's the 12 by 12 paper from Martha. Um, mm -hmm. Not sorry, not Martha from Michaels. It's all good. Um, <laughs> like it's late oh, on yeah. a Tuesday. We we knew what you meant. It was Michaels, not Martha. <laughs> yeah, it's from Michaels. It's from their one of their cardstock 12 by 12 books. Um, and it's kind of cool. It's actually kind of has like a sheen to it. So it almost feels like it could actually be a placemat, you know? Like Ooh. imagine. I could Imagine see that in, in like a trippy looking like, coffee house, like putting it down and like, like putting your, like laminate it and then use it as a placemat. That would be cool. Yeah. So this will be fun because I haven't actually, I wanted to remake it since I took this class and I haven't yet. So I'm like, okay, what do I have to do? This mm -hmm. is good. Well, good this would be good practice for you. Awesome. Yeah. Now let's see if I could do the tipping thing though. This is the other challenge. That is a, so I have this, oh, I have the perfect angle here. So as you guys type little comments, I can still read them at this angle. And you guys could just see both my watermelon shirt and my project. So I think I am in perfect alignment for once. Usually it's like, Wah. so I'm going to take advantage of this and I'm going to start my coloring. Okay. I think I did it. Okay. I can We're see in, your right? green paper. I can see your hand. Okay. Both hands. So, okay. great. So, take one paper, and then you're going to make a circle. And it could be whatever size your paper is. If you are if you have, like, let's say, 8.5 by 11 paper, um, you know, I happen to have by 12 by 12, so I'm just going with it. So it could be whatever size you want it to be, whatever size you have. And um, um, I'm not going to try to do a perfect circle. I'm going to do a wonky circle. Which I like. I, I would much rather go for asymmetry than like try to go for a perfect circle. Because to me, the asymmetrical circle just gives it so much more character. It's like this okay. circle has got so, personality. So we did that. And then, um, let me think. Okay, so then on the inside of that, I'm going to now make another circle. So it's like I'll end up with a ring. Kind so of. Like, a, like a concentric, two concentric circles kind of a yes. thing? Yes. Okay. And it doesn't have to be the same, but you do have to kind of, after, we're going to cut this all out. So you do want to be able to match it up again. Mm -hmm. Like a kind of like a puzzle. So you're basically going to have to reassemble this whole thing once you've cut it. Yes. Okay. So now, so I have my two circles. Now I'm going to go for one more in the center. All right. And snail mail for Zoe just joined. Hello. Hey, Zoe. Okay. It definitely looks weird. Okay. So now I'm going to, you can either use an exacto since I'm kind of better with a scissor for the outer rings, since you, I don't need the border intact. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just go ahead and use a scissor to cut it. Got it. And at this point, um, I'm not completely dedicated to my outer shape. Like you could follow it, but you could, if you kind of don't like part of it, you can just go ahead and change it at this point. So it's flexible. You're saying design wise, you can kind of, you can kind of change yeah. course midstream. That's good. I yeah, at this cool. point. Okay. And there's something very satisfying about hearing people cut paper. Do not ask me why. But then again, 
I was that weird kid who always liked going into Staples because the office supply smelled so good. <laughs> Does anyone else have this phenomenon in their life where, like, you love the sight and scent of new office supplies? Like, I get super excited if I see a new notebook. I'm like, yeah! I definitely love new office supplies. Like, back to school time, I was so excited. <laughs> Me too. I'm like, yes, a new assignment notebook, even though it's going to make me do work. I don't know why I would get so excited. So excited. New pencils? Like, I'm in there. I am there. Highlighters? Heck yes. And the new big highlighters. pink pearl eraser. Heck to the yes. Okay. So I have my, oh, right. Now that it's down, you can't see it. Okay. So, is that the outermost circle? Yes. So this is the most outer circle. Okay. So now, I'm gonna, before I go to cut the others, I'm going to take the blue sheet of paper and trace it. And you know, I, uh, I'm channeling Jim Lynch on my project tonight, I do believe, because uh, it just occurred to me, this is the most, I don't do a lot of coloring pages because it requires me to sit still and actually focus on something for a long period of time. But man, this thing has got me so zen right now. I need to do these a bit more often, I think. And Allison, you're looking at the comments because I can't see them at all. So I'm just letting everyone know. I have no idea what you're saying. Okay. Um, Phil says I've got to do a coloring page every year. <laughs> oh, that can. <laughs> I can. I can manage that. Once a year, right? And someone was saying about the cutting sounds ASMR on Art Throwdown. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very much so. And I promise, ooh, Jim is coloring the parrot. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me, let's align our books here. Uh, ooh, ladybugs. All right, I'm going to flip back through. So anybody who does not have a copy yet of this, go bother Russ. <laughs> I'm sure he's got a palette of these in his, in his studio somewhere. Ooh, look, a bee. Um, Wait, but, did I miss this? He designed these pages? This is not, none other than the Crayola Nature Escapes intricate oh. animals and patterns so russ actually produced he created he created and designed this book in concert with crayola so all of these designs that you are seeing here these are all russell look at the little seahorses wow. how cute gosh he's so creative russ you That's are so a creative amazing. dude so jim is coloring the parrot out of this book so i am going to advance i'm going to little spoiler here. You guys get to see Jim's finished product because he's probably going to post it later. Ooh, a lion. A before and after. Yeah. So I'm going to show you guys the before. So you can see, like, we can look inside of Jim's mind. What is he doing? Well, I think oh, the birds were towards the front. I see an owl. There's like a bunch of parrots flying around. Jim, is it this guy? Is it this massive big parrot sitting on the, or toucan, I think he is, towards the front? Um, Penelope, I am not sure if you can buy, I think you can get it, and you'd have to look on his blog at the, um, oh, oh, here's the parrot. That was a toucan. What am I doing? I misspoke. All right, so here I think is the parrot. He's adorable, by the way, that, uh, is it this one, Jim? This is the one that he, I think, is working on. You might be able to find this. It's called Crayola Nature Escapes on Amazon. Um, here it is. Yep, he confirms this is indeed. So this is Jim's before picture. Um, and they're, it's, it's, it's incredible. Like the amount of detail on these pages is crazy. Very impressive. So here again is the book. It comes with 40 unique pages for coloring. And um, 
if for some reason you cannot find this online, um, go bother Russell and <laughs> and butter him up and he will give you a, you know, probably, maybe. I'm totally volunteering him. But yes, um, a couple of us have gotten a, a copy of this very special coloring book. And so it's kind of like we all have a secret Dakota ring. Oh, I just lost Jennifer. I just realized that. Um, so she might have, whoops, whoopsie, I was busy looking at parrots and I got distracted. I'm like, whoops, there was a bustle in the hedgerow and she disappeared. I think she might be having internet issues. Let's get her back in if we can. Uh, I do believe her internet just kicked her off. So let's see, it's waiting for her. And I think she's coming in, connecting. Okay. I hear, uh, I hear you. I don't know. I can't. I So my battery died, of course. And I'm like, no. So now why can't? I can hear you, but it says Thank connecting. Uh, uh, so did you plug back in? No, I switched to my phone. Um, hmm. right, hang on. You entertain. I mean, all right, so um, I've got the beaks colored in. I've got the clouds colored in. And again, these are watercolor pencils, so I'm going to be coloring and then I'm going to be painting. I'm so excited. I can't, that's my favorite part about these is the painting. And um, you have to be kind of delicate. Otherwise, um, it, they get a little runny looking, but worth it it's totally worth it then you got to let it dry and now I am not a patient person so I need to buy one of those special artist hair dryers uh, like Russ has where you can quickly dry your project I don't like to wait I like to just color it and paint it and dry it and then make my envelope because you know that's what it's about and Frank I beg to differ earlier you said you were not an artist so you're going to be our research person on here but um, um, there you are um, but, uh, Frank, you know, making an envelope, that's art too. Like I, I that's totally artsy. So I, I consider you an artist, my friend. I absolutely do. And a postcard curator as well. So, all right. And she's back. Awesome. This is so much fun. Set up. It's like, <laughs> and I'm plugged in. Okay. It's a little weird, but it's okay. I'm in the screen. Okay. I'm cutting away. Okay. You're a little pixely, but um, I heard you say that you are cutting. So Jennifer is going to continue cutting. And I'm going to keep on drawing. Put my camera back down here just a bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. And then that's better. Yes. All right. And, you know, Russ brought up an interesting point the other night that um, once you start doing these coloring pages, especially with the mandalas and, and, and things that have a repeating pattern, you absolutely need a legend. <laughs> you need a color legend, I do think. Unless, like these little bushes here, these are, what they look like they're two-tone or they could be, so that's pretty easy. But the more detailed ones I get lost in, so... I think the color legend thing that he was constructing the other night is the perfect remedy to that. Otherwise, you're going to you end up losing your place in your in your coloring page. So, or you can just do random. I did the the bird I originally did was pretty random looking. Like there was no rhyme or reason. I was just scattering colors everywhere. And to be honest, that technique works pretty well too if you're not looking to keep track of patterns and sequence and such with your colors. So I cut out okay. So I cut my blue out. So the blue is smaller than the big green one, right? So it's actually so it's the same size. Okay. And it should match up. So I have my blue, I have my green. Now the blue one, I had outlined with the outer part of the green. 
So I'm going to leave that piece whole. I don't want to cut it at this time. So I'm going to put that aside. And now I still have my interior rings that I originally traced out mm -hmm. on the um, on the green. Remember, I made three rings. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to continue now because um, I want to keep my outer ring in intact. And I'm going to cut that with the exacto. So here I go. All right. And I assume you have some kind of special cutting mat underneath that, right? For the exacto knife? Yes, I do. I have my cutting mat. Got it. That is one thing I do not yet have, but I probably should invest in that because I bought the I bought the cutting blades. Of all places, I found a set of like three or four in a packet at Dollar Tree of different sizes and um, lengths. But uh, I found those and I thought, oh, I'm going to hang on to these because I feel like at some point I'm going to get brave enough to buy myself a cutting mat and then I will start actually doing more precision cutting versus just messing around with the scissors at some point. A cutting mat's good. It seems like a very it's useful a... thing to have, especially when you want to level up with your crafting. I'm almost there. I'm like I feel almost like, there. Uh, also, like, even if you don't actually use it, like, for the purpose of cutting, I just, like, I go to the dining room table and then I put it there and it feels like my, like, little workstation. So it's a good way to kind of make you feel organized when you're working. Excellent. Excellent. Do you have a, Jennifer, do you have a favorite brand of cutting mat that you recommend? Um, this one is Pacific Arc. Okay. Um, and I've been satisfied with it. Um, it's kind of the only cutting mat I've ever owned. Okay. Well, so. that's a, that sounds like a pretty strong endorsement there. <laughs> Yeah, I had it, um, I feel like I had it, like, in years ago, maybe 15 even. It just, I don't do a lot of heavy paper in there, so, um, so it's lasted, um, for my lighter, uh, cutting needs. Awesome, awesome. And just so you know, you are slightly pixelated, like, your voice is slightly pixelated. Um, uh -oh. slightly laggy. It's kind of, it's funny. It's kind of fading in and out. So just so you know, we'll, we'll just pray for the best. <laughs> <laughs> we will keep our fingers crossed this evening. Okay, so now I have a ring. And right, that's my. my what is super there. interesting about this whole process is that you're not going for a perfect circle. So you're just, are you basically just kind of winging the circle so that it is purposefully asymmetrical? Yeah, I actually, even from what I had drawn, I totally like the way my blade swung around and maybe like the weird angle on my mat it totally ended up coming out even different from from the lines that i drew so it was a complete winging it says effect. the organic crafter i love it i love it like there's, there's no boundary you're like i'm just doing it my way i love that so then um so now i have this inside space okay so now i still have to do one more cut maybe based on the circle on the inside of this and then i'll have my three rings or two rings in a center so one more to go Oops. wait i'm still here <laughs> no problem so we're here for you <laughs> we're here okay And that's like, I have to say from a, from an approach and a stylistic standpoint, you and Russ are so different with your approaches. Like your approach is more organic. And I think that kind of aligns with how I craft. I like, I craft um, basically by the seat of my pants. <laughs> 
sometimes. And <laughs> and Russell is so regimented. He's like, it must be measured. And he's like, I'm going an eighth inch in. So it's just, it's so interesting to see people's different crafting styles um, and how, you know, you can yeah. have the same project or even the same, I don't know, the same coloring page and two different people will approach it in such different, like diverse crafting ways. Like I, that fascinates me. It's really fun. I always remember like, having a friend from college. Like we went um, sketching together on this hill um, near a lake, and you're both sitting there painting the same scene, but because you each have your own style, it comes out different, and it's really fun, you know, to compare in that way. Yeah, and like how people interpret the the, the landscape or the design. That's kind of like um, I have. Okay, I I confess I have never been to one of these things, but. Um, there are those painting parties where there's a bunch of wine and people drink oh, yes. and then they all paint I the same thing. One. Actually, I went to one twice, but yeah, for, for a friend's birthday. Um, yeah, it, we may, um, oh, here, I actually show it to you. I still have mine. Do you really? <laughs> all right, so Jennifer's going to show us her her creation from the wine and paint. I don't know if there's an official name for that type of thing, but... Um, painting parties and they have them I mean they have them for kids birthday parties too because my my older daughter has been to a couple of those where they give each kid the same um the same well, when they're younger they give them the same thing within the lines to paint Ooh, that is pretty so we all have birds wow. and which this is my painting style at all because I kind of do other sketching and painting myself so for the, this, like, to me, isn't even that good, but, um, but I still have it. So it's, it's you know, sort of a funny scene, but that was paint night. <laughs> and uh, Penelope is calling it paint and sip. <laughs> I feel yes, like. Yes, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> and uh, so, Carrie, we were just talking about um, just different, Carrie had a phone call, so she's just popping back in. We're talking about different styles of crafting. So Jennifer is definitely a more organic crafter um and sometimes she just makes it fit or she just kind of feels the feels the vibe of what size or shape or you know design something should be whereas russ russ is like the polar opposite and he'll be like i must measure this and so he'll be like i want seven eighths in this way and i want and one and a half inches this way and so like he's got it like super super measured so uh, we were just talking about different crafting styles and then I was telling um, Jennifer, I have never been to one of those paint and sip nights, but I feel like, uh, like I would make a mockery of the event. Like a lot of people try to make their design really pretty. Like I would draw something with like fierce eyebrows and big scary eyes. Like I have this octopus thing that I always draw when I get really hyper <laughs> and it's got like crazy tentacles and it's got like sharp teeth and fierce eyebrows and I have to show you guys I, I made a um I started drawing it in college just for fun for giggles and I draw it all the time like randomly so I actually have my older daughter took it I have a large shrinky dink that I made it was like a full sheet of shrinky dink at one point and I got I don't know super creative and I'm like I gotta draw it again so I <laughs> drew this crazy looking octopus and then I baked it it is, I'm, I'm going to make a note here to bring that down next time. You guys need to see it. It's super funny. But I would be that person who would draw like, um, like just calamity in the background and there'd be like chirping birds and, and there'd be like a giant octopus in the corner or something. But I, 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 I can't take that stuff seriously. I can't take paint night seriously. Just saying. Well, no, they, they have you all paint the same thing. That's, no, that's I would rebel like that. That's not, like, that's not going to work for so, me and my wins. Yeah, so to see how everyone's like hummingbirds come out and they're like all the same but different. <laughs> yeah i can't see me taking that event very seriously especially if there's wine involved i'd be like look instead of a flower i made an entire sheet of octopi with sharp teeth and fierce eyebrows oh well, they're always like you could use a different color if you want basically like they're like now take this color and take that color but there's always someone they're like, you could use a different color if you'd like. So it's like everyone's was like orange and purple. And then like one person's there's like red and blue. So that'd be you. 
<laughs> but see, so Frank is Frank is channeling the botched Jesus restoration. Have you guys seen that one? And that's not the, that's know, not the first time that that's happened, Frank. I've I've been noticing that a lot more lately. Like, I don't know where they get these people from that are supposed to be doing the restoration of all these classic fine art pieces. Um, and dang it, Russ, you're missing a good conversation this evening. It's it's funny, uh, but. <laughs> There's another one, and it's I think it's a lady's face, but it it looks horrible. <laughs> it's just I don't know what why uh, it was horrible. <laughs> Carrie laughed super hard when she saw the the poor Jesus restoration. That's oh, that's horrible. And um, oh, okay, it's um. Uh, Mario restoration fail in Spain. Frank's got the link up there in the comments if anybody wants to go check that out. Um, Ashley's talking about Shrinky Dinks because I just triggered her memory. Um, <laughs> you can still buy Shrinky Dinks, by the way, folks. If um, if Actually, we should do that some night. Those are fun. But um, at one point, my mom got me the 8.5 by 11 sheets of Shrinky Dinks for Christmas one year. And it was just this big envelope of them and... There weren't any shapes like they just gave you a bunch of blank papers, shrinking ink papers, and a big box of colored pencils, and you just went at it. And that's the that's where the octopus came from. Um, so you can still buy it. I've seen them in Joann's. I assume Hobby Lobby would probably have them, but uh, there are shrinky dinks out there in the universe, folks, and you can still buy them, which is super cool. Anna just joined a few minutes ago. Hey, Anna. Hello. And, yeah. All right, but all right, I am, how are your flamingos coming? Oh, they're coming. I'm, I'm coloring the menagerie right now behind them. This is a slow process, I must say, because I just keep talking. <laughs> but that's the point of Art Throwdown, you know, a little coloring, a little chatting. Maybe yes. keep it loose and improvisational, folks. All right, I'm erasing the lines that I didn't follow. <laughs> Who needs lines? I mean, there are a few things that I do measure, um, some like, but it's like minimal. Mm -hmm. It's only the essentials. See, the only time I do any kind of measuring is when I am making an envelope with my punch board. And even then, there are times when I'll just, I'll have a sheet of scrapbook paper and it doesn't fit any, any of the, the, specs that are on the envelope guide on that little list they give you of like your paper size is this therefore your envelope size would be this and then here's your score line like sometimes I just wing it and I force the score line to be whatever I feel it should be and nine times out of ten it works out you just have to do a little bit of pre-folding to make sure that your angle truly looks normal once your envelope gets like full, fully folded so I, I cheat a little bit sometimes with that so That's I am okay. also an organic envelope maker. Yay. Let's see. Carrie is writing postcards. Wait, that's Carrie, right? In her alter yep. ego? Yep, okay. that is Carrie. Yep. Okay. Um, writing postcards for everyone this whole time and mailing them out tomorrow. Nice. And wants to see how long it'll take to get to us. That is an interesting experiment. I cannot wait to see Yeah. It. So everybody, if you get a postcard from Carrie, please let her know when you receive the postcard so we can all keep our mail carriers honest. <laughs> the one I sent you, that like took two weeks or so. The day on it was what, June 8th? Was it June 18th I saw on there? I don't even remember. <laughs> hey, wait, I thought I it was gone it right for sure. I'm, like, I'm going to check it. come back to me. No, I'm going to check it. I have it right here. Um, you put a date on this card, Jennifer. Oh, wait. And since I've got it in front of me, I can also. Yes. June 18th. Oh, my God. Is when you sent me this little card. It must be when you wrote it. And I, you know what? It carries on, and too. I so I'm going to talk about my creative lettering, by the way. Um. Look at this. So I have never, Jennifer, thank you very much for this. I have never received a woven card before. I think this is super cool. 
and um, she signed it. Like, how sweet is this? So this was my birthday card. It has the Duncan, it is woven, and it has all the funky Duncan colors in there. And look, she even squoze some glitter pieces in there. So um, I didn't know that you could make something like this and make it into a card. So you guys, every time I get something like this, I am amazed like that this is physically possible with paper. Who knew? <laughs> And you sent me all sorts of cute paper bits, too. Like, these are definitely going to become something. Postcards. And I've actually got, um, oh, here's another idea for a project. I made one of these for my mom last fall. I took, it looked like a kind of, the wood was kind of flimsy. It was kind of lightweight, but it was an old, like a wine crate. And I got it from Savers and I painted it white. And then I took a similar picture like this. It was this kind of like this vintage feline aesthetic. And I took a similar picture. Um, it wasn't the sleuth kitty, but it was, I think it was a, a cat with like um, geraniums around him. And it said like 19 cents or something like that. So it looked like a old crate art. And I, I Mod Podged it on there and then I sealed it. And uh, my mom to this day is using it for her flowers on her front porch. So that's what these reminded me of. But look how cute. I'm just going to show everybody because these are adorable. We've got the black cat, uh, five cents. We've got a bulldog. We've got top dog. Whoops. This thing's hilarious. A Jolly Christmas. There's a cat. Looks like it's carrying a fruitcake or something. Jennifer, where did you get these? These are adorable. <laughs> these are actually, so they are um, Cal um, Calvini and Co. Uh, images. And they were from a, a desktop calendar that I cut up. Oh, so. so that's where mine came from as well. Interesting. But mine don't look like this. Mine are all different, um, like floral and cats riding a bicycle. Yeah. and <laughs> They have that also. So yeah, they do a lot of um, Cavalini. It's all like vintage reproduced looking images. Well, they're adorable. So thank you for those. I wanted to showcase those. You're welcome. And let's see what else. And you even gave me, see, this is cool. You even gave me the little ones. And you, and you know these are, look at these two cats wearing, I can't tell if these are party hats or dunce caps, but they're cute. These are all going on my postcards. Look at these. Yay. Yes, I know. I was like, you could totally use them. Oh, these are getting used. These are going on some vintage looking postcards. I cannot wait. Can't wait. All right. So as it so happens, I did have that in front of me. And then, um, so you know the hello from the other side of the note. I was also, I that day I had taken a creative hand lettering class, so I was practicing. Ah. All right, I'm going to pull up the hello. Hang on one second. There it is. Check it out, hand lettered. That's beautiful. Thank you. Did you use the calligraphy? What, what kind of pen did you use for this? Um, I used, actually, I have it right here. It's just the black micron pen. What size micron is that? It is two. Oh, and does it have, Zero, how did you do, did it, does it have a, like a chiseled tip or? No, it's just, where's this camera I lost? Oh, there. So, no, it's just, it's a point. And then they teach you how to, um, like, add the thickness to it, and then you just color it in. Oh, uh, I was going to say, it almost looks like you use something with a chisel tip to get this the darker yeah, outline on the, the L's for the hello. That's the look of it. It's meant to look like that, but you're actually using just a fine point. Wow. Okay, so I did not realize that you could do that with microns. I learned yeah. something else new tonight. Yeah. Look at that. But yeah, ha my hat's Wait. off to you for Wait. learning the hand lettering. That is, um, gosh, that takes some patience. I've tried it. Not with much It is success. definitely a slow learning process. So. <laughs> and I feel like it's one of those so, skills oh, that's oh. like use or lose. <laughs> I just looked at the time. 
I don't know. Oh my god, do we really have six minutes? What? I'm almost ready to start weaving. I was erasing my pencils. <laughs> so we'll see how far we get. Okay, so what I have set up here, um, we were chit chatting, so I went ahead um this over. Let's see. No, that was a bad idea. Don't move. Okay. There. So the blue blob that you see here is um that's the same shape as the the green one. And so what I did is I cut these like w wonky wavy pie pieces mm -hmm. and so that's what the whole thing is set up as and then i made sure next to it i have my green set of three little blob it's all set up like a puzzle like i put it back together and okay so then we're just gonna go over it and you'll see it come together but you just you want to make sure it's like set up the right way so that i don't know I move this <laughs> so that you don't get mixed up as you go oh look yeah you could kind of see the different cutouts here it's all green okay here we go i cannot wait to see what this is going to look like so i'm starting kind of over on the outer one and then under and then over and you have to kind of match it up to that section of your edge so that's why it's helpful if they're like in the same direction mm -hmm. okay so that's there now i'm going to grab the next one and so now i'm going to go under and moves around into going so under over and then under on the middle one. Oh and you wow, can start I can already see, see the design starting to come together. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is a good shot. And uh, okay, so and then we keep going. So under over under and sometimes like it might end up being or it ends up being a little off even sort of as you go with the edges which is okay because I mean you want to get it as close to what it is at this point like as possible mm -hmm. but you can still go back and trim it wait this one is weird so there's a little bit of room for error and tweaking if you need to trim at the last minute you can yeah there still is okay. room like for the edges like you want everything else to line up but for your outer edges you can if if the blue doesn't line up with the green exactly you can still trim that a bit Oh no, two minutes. Do you want to no. say goodbye? <laughs> I guess I'll start our sign off. Well, folks, um, thanks so much for hopping on here tonight. And as Russ always says, we know there's other places you guys could be tonight, but we are super thrilled that you chose to be here with us this evening. And uh, we'll be back again tomorrow the same time at 10 Eastern for more crafty hijinks and projects. And, you know, quite frankly, we never know what's going to happen on here. So, it's always interesting to uh, figure out what we're what we end up working on, <laughs> mostly, and most usually at the last minute. So, um, much love to you guys out there, and um, uh, hopefully this was entertaining, and we made your day just a bit brighter by doing our craftiness. And have a wonderful evening, everybody, and um, happy Tuesday to all of you. And Allison, thank you for letting me come on. It's oh, yeah. been a blast. Thanks for popping in. <laughs> and so <laughs> what, what do I call this craft? It's a woven paper circle? Yeah. All woven right. paper circle. Cool beans. 
Alrighty, cool. So now I know what to put when I'm putting our YouTube description down. So awesome. Yes. And you can see how far I got. Womp womp. <laughs> the flamingos aren't even pink yet. So I've got uh, I've got some work to do, some catching up on this tomorrow night. So and then All right. you can start to see it coming along. That is beautiful. Are you going to laminate that? No, I think um, probably not. Um, but once you get all the pieces in, then um, then it, you have the flaps. So 